Yeah. 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 Good afternoon, uh, good day rather. Um, I was just going through my Bible, what I love doing. Um, I'm sure some of you might be wondering, this is the only thing I do. I just want to say, with all joy and happiness, this is what gives me life. Uh, it uh, propels my days, my day rather. And uh, I have structured in such a way that I, I am um, really at interval, you know. And it helps me to skip um, scale over hurdles and things that I go through and I get to encounter and it gives me joy. I must, I must say this. I must say that again. And uh, I was just reading uh, from the book of Luke, chapter 10, you know, the Bible, from um, verse, uh, I was reading from verse 25, you know. I, was re- I read the whole book of. Um, Luke 10, where Jesus Christ was speaking, then from verse 25, something struck me, and I just decided I was inspired to share this with you. And there was a certain lawyer who stood and testified, from verse 25, who stood and testified, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? So this guy was a very wise man. He understands that there's a life after earth. You know, we don't die as Christians, we don't die, we transit, you know, we change. From our earthly body to our spiritual body, from on earth here the, into heaven, if we are in the good books of our Father God, or and if we are not, is the other way around. Is we're going to hell. So um, he understands that he's a lawyer. He has climbed the ladder and uh, making a lot of money, I guess. A certain lawyer, and he asked Jesus this question, and Jesus told him that um, you know what it is. Go to Deuteronomy six. Verse 5, read everything that is there. It says, um, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and with all, and, and love your neighbor as yourself. That's what Jesus Christ told him. But he said, ah, I've done all that in verse 28. You know, you have answered rightly. You know, Jesus Christ told him that because he said, he told Jesus he has done all. He knows all everything. He quoted it for him in verse 27. And Jesus told him in verse 28, oh, you've done right. You've done the right thing. And if you do that, you will what? Leave. So, verse 29, the guy went on, like, he said, oh, I've done all this. Um, but he wanted to justify it, said to him, and who is my neighbor? And that's a very intriguing question. Who is my neighbor? You know, because he has done, uh, he just told him, if you, have, if you do all this, you will live right. So he, he, the question was very, maybe I'm sure the thing shock, shock, um, struck him. So he asked Jesus, who is my neighbor? So Jesus used a very popular story that we call Good Samaritan, you know, and everybody, I'm sure everyone of us know that story. And um, I was reading through that story, and um, about a good, I just want to take it down. A Good Samaritan is about a guy that was traveling, and he, he um, from verse 30, he uh, was traveling from Jericho, Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among thieves who stripped him of his clothes, wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. Then verse 31, you know, went made, made us understand that so many people came besides him. And the first person that was recorded that passed him was a priest. Can you imagine? And that priest came past him and went, saw him, and went past, and he passed by on the other side. Then the second person that came was a Levite. The Levite is a, a people that walk in the church, you know, in the old um, times, and they walk in the church and the synagogue or in the temple, and looked and passed on him, last 32, and 33 says, And a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. My dear brothers and sisters, it was recorded, it, I didn't see where the Bible said the Samaritan was a faithful, a Christian, he was a good person, he did that, he maybe said all his good works, they just read he was a Samaritan. But if you look at the first two, a pastor, a priest, and a Levite, maybe someone that works in the church or a lay reader or something in a modern day generation or an assistant pastor or a worker in the church, you know, and he had compassion. And the Bible records that he, the Samaritan was the one that stopped, had, had compassion, helped him, took care of him, took him to the hospital, paid his bills, told him to take care of him that he'll be coming back. One of my words, the Holy Spirit trying to say to us today, there are so many neighbors around us. And when, when you go down, Jesus Christ asks, he says, so who, in verse um, 36, he says, so which of these three do you think was 
neighbor to him who fell among the thief. And the lawyer said, He he who showed mercy on him. Then Jesus said, Go and do likewise. That's a mandate. What are we trying to say here? Jesus Christ, the guy attested that he was the one that did a good job, that took care of the, the wounded guy, that is the neighbor. Not the, past, the, the priest and not the Levite. You know, the neighbor is the one that actually did what he always hears and not just showing it. So, the pastor in that situation, the priest, showed it. The Levite in that situation just was showing that, oh, I am a follower of Christ, so I know God. But the Samaritan actually proved by acting upon what he knows. What I'm trying to say, brothers and sisters, there are so many neighbors out there. There are people that you see on the streets when you go to work. There's people that you see that, you, that there are neighbors that you live just next door besides. There are people that you stay in the same office with. There are students Lord, that are not as well to do with. There are people that don't have the same kind of shoe you have. We have loads of stacks of shoes in our wardrobes. We have all kinds of things to do. Our neighbors are out there or are, are, are out there expecting that God God is just looking and saying, My my son, do something. You have neighbors here and what are you waiting for? Jesus Christ gave us a mandate. He said, go and do likewise. That means do the same thing. Reach out for your neighbors. And that is the criteria for having what internal life that the, li the lawyer was seeking for. I want to encourage us. Ask the Lord to lead you or to open your eyes so that you can see a neighbor that is in need, that is crying and yearning for help. And I believe that God, when you ask him, he does. If you ask him for sincerely, Father, who do you want me to minister to? Who do you want me to bless? Who do you want me to reach out to? Who do you want me to give my clothes to my, my special to? Who do you want me to give a ride down home? Or who do you want me to give, cook food for? Who do you want me to pay a hospital bill for? Who do you want me to pay tuition fee for academics to or buy test books and all that? I know God will do that for you. My dear brothers and sisters, one of the criteria for making heaven is that we must love our neighbors as ourselves and be our neighbor's keepers. Take care of our neighbors. I know God and the Holy Spirit are speaking to you as you're listening to this, and I trust Him to do great things. If you live around me by the special grace of God with all sense of humility and no pride in myself, you would know that I'm not just a speaker of this. By God's grace, I do what I say to you. And I know that God, in His infinite mercy, will forgive us in ways that have annoyed Him and grant us the grace to do these things because they are easier said. But I trust that when you have the heart and the willingness to do it, God will help you to do it. Thank you very much. God bless you in Jesus' name and see you at the next video. Amen.